danger. Interruptor pulse closer fault interrupters operate at high voltage. Failure to observe these precautions will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from your company's operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, follow your company's operating procedures and rules. This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instructions that came with your product, SNC Instruction Sheet 766-530. This video series covers protection and communication setup of an interruptor pulse closer fault interrupter. Before beginning, read and understand the overview section of the written instructions. You will need to be familiar with the unique features and functions of an interruptor pulse closer fault interrupter before continuing. In this video, we'll cover an overview of the operation screen. The protection and control module from an interruptor fault interrupter can be configured when using a docking station. See written instruction sheet 766-557 for more information. Interruptor fault interrupters can be configured using SNC's IntelliLink setup software. This software can be downloaded from SNC's customer portal. See the written instructions or the SNC IntelliLink setup software and IntelliTeam Designer tutorial videos for more information. Once you have the latest version installed, double click on the IntelliLink setup software icon to start. Now select Local Connection if at the Interruptor Fault Interrupter or if configuring the protection and control module from the docking station. If logging into the control remotely, select Remote. Set your IP settings and select the IntelliLink button. IntelliLink setup software opens to the operation screen. You'll find all the basic controls to operate the fault interrupter on this screen. The operation screen features a graphical representation of the IntelliRuptor fault interrupter, including the open close lever. This can be used as a reference to understand orientation of the physical poles, which are labeled with 1, 2, and 3. The high and low physical terminals are represented by Y and X. Y is the high terminal and X is the low terminal. Real-time voltage is displayed for both terminals at each pole with the Y on top and X below. There are different display formats for the voltage information that can be chosen for the voltage reporting base setting. There is a direction label for each X and Y as well. All of these labels can be changed on the Setup, General, Site-Related, Systems page. Let's change the labels on the poles. These can be changed in order to match your company's standards. The X and Y direction association can be changed as well in case the fault interrupter is installed in the other direction, eliminating the need to reinstall the fault interrupter. In this case, it will make Y the source side terminal and X the load side. Instead of direction 1 and direction 2, we might change the labels to source and load. After applying the change, the new labels can be seen back on the operation screen. Voltage reporting can be changed here as well. When phase to phase is selected, voltage reporting will change the reporting levels by a factor of 1.73, the square root of 3, for the operation screen, the metering screen, and SCADA. Back on the operation screen, the labels on the user command controls on the lower half of the page can also be changed to match your company's terminology. This can be done on the Setup, General, User Commands page. The fault interrupter can be operated from the operation screen using the Open and Close buttons. There is a button for each phase below the Open and Close buttons. These buttons will enable or disable operation for each phase. An open or close command will always execute three-phase operation if all three phases are either all selected or deselected. Single-phase or two-phase operation can be selected by enabling only one or two of the phases. 
There's also a one-phase operation slide control. This must be set to enabled in order to attempt single-phase operation. If this is set to blocked, the switch will always attempt three-phase operation. When a hotline tag is enabled, the fault interrupter will not close. If applied when the fault interrupter is closed, the interrupter can be opened but not closed while the hotline tag is in place. A hotline tag can be applied through the software by clicking the hotline tag slide control to on. When applied, the IntelliLink text will turn red. The fault interrupter will not close while a hotline tag is enabled, but it can be opened through any means. If a hotline tag was applied locally on the fault interrupter or via SCADA, the associated text will turn red as well. An IntelliLink setup software hotline tag can only be removed using IntelliLink software or the hotline tag lever. The SCADA hotline tag can only be removed by SCADA or the manual lever, and the lever hotline tag can only be removed by the lever. To remove an IntelliLink or SCADA hotline tag with the lever, cycle it on and off twice. More than one hotline tag can be applied at a time. The ground trip block can be enabled or disabled through IntelliLink software by clicking on the ground trip slide control. However, if ground trip block is physically applied on the fault interrupter, it cannot be enabled through IntelliLink software. If the switch is being configured using a docking station, the ground trip block will be on and not available to change via IntelliLink software. When the test on back feed slide control is enabled, it allows the switch to close with voltage on both sides of the interrupter fault interrupter. This setting might be enabled in a case where a normally opened tie point is designed to allow closed transition. The back feed voltage level can be set on the setup, general, site related system page. Circuit testing can be enabled or disabled using this slide control. Many utilities refer to blocking circuit testing as one-shot mode. When circuit testing is disabled and a fault occurs, the switch will trip directly to lockout. Only when circuit testing is enabled will the switch perform a test sequence after a fault. This control only applies to the general profiles because they are the only profiles with circuit testing. Both closing profiles and the hotline tag profile are always one shot to lockout. Below that is a slide control for the sensitive earth trip. This is a ground element used on three wire systems to detect ground faults. It can be enabled or blocked using this control. Note that sensitive earth trip is independent of the ground negative sequence trip. To determine whether the sensitive earth trip will be disabled by the ground trip block lever, go to the Setup, General, User Command screen. There are several checkboxes used to define the functionality of the ground trip block lever. These selections can be independently enabled or disabled by clicking on the checkboxes. Another profile can be enabled using the Change to Alternate General Profile selection. If the fault interrupter has tripped and locked out, there will be an indication on the operation screen. More information about the current that caused the lockout is available in the boxes below each pole. These indications can be cleared by either closing the open device or by clicking the Clear Latched Overcurrent button. The Remote Operation button is used when there is a need to prevent remote operation. If you are connected via IntelliLink software and this button is clicked, it will disable all controls and will require reconnection via Wi-Fi to re-establish the ability to use the controls. SCADA control will also be lost if remote operation is disabled. Protection profiles contain settings that define the protection functionality for the fault interrupter. Only one profile will be in use at any point in time. In the final section of the operation screen, three profile fields are displayed, the active general profile, active closing profile, and the profile in use. Profile in use will change when other features are in use, such as hotline tag. The active general profile can be changed from this screen 
by using the Change drop-down. This will update the profile in use if no other profile is in effect. This change to the active profile can also be done via SCADA commands. The active closing profile can be changed the same way. The active closing profile will always revert back to closing profile 1 after a close operation occurs. The most common application is to set closing profile 1 to perform a pulse close test and set closing profile 2 as a point on wave profile. In the upper right of the operation screen, you'll find information about the fault interrupter, including the control status, the model of the fault interrupter, whether the disconnect is open or closed, and whether a disconnect is installed on the fault interrupter. There are four possible states of the control status. OK, error, warning, or alarm. Error will cause the fault interrupter to be inoperable in most situations and is common if the software is being operated without a simulator mechanism. To clear the error, warning, or alarm status, navigate to the Diagnostic screen and the appropriate tab. Click on Clear Warnings or other appropriate button, and the control status will change to OK. The process is the same for warnings, errors, and alarms, and clearing the status may cause the control to restart and require the user to log in again. For more information on how to handle warnings and alarms, see SNC Instruction Sheet 766-550. Setting changes are only saved after passing a validation check using the Validate and Apply buttons. After changing a setting, click on the Validate button to initiate a logical check of the pending changes for errors. If the validation procedure detects an error or inconsistency, it will be displayed in the Validation Result box found on the Setup Validate Apply screen, so the errors can be fixed before applying changes to the control. When ready to apply the changes, use the Apply button. This button will run the same validation check, and if no errors are detected, instantly save the changes. A successful check will be indicated in the Validation Result box. The Reset Buffer button Reset settings in the buffer memory to the settings presently active in the control. The Reset Buffer button will not undo changes already applied with the Apply command. SNC recommends keeping changes to a minimum between applying changes. It's much easier to troubleshoot if changes are minimal. This concludes the overview of the operation screen. In the next video, we will demonstrate the steps to configure a general profile.